Uganda says efforts were underway on Wednesday to ensure that the perpetrators of an attack which killed three in a national park on Tuesday are hunted down and killed. Ugandan military spokesman Felix Kulaije said Wednesday that a joint army, police and wildlife authority force has deployed all resources, both technical and physical, in pursuit of these terrorists and will ensure they account for their acts. The attack purportedly carried out by the Arai Democratic Forces ADF killed a couple on their honeymoon who were of South African and British nationality as well as their Ugandan safari guide in the Queen Elizabeth National Park in Uganda's southwest. The rebel group ADF has been affiliated with Islamic State since 2019 and is based in the Democratic Republic of Congo. On Wednesday, Islamic State issued a statement claiming responsibility for the killings. The United Kingdom on Wednesday warned its citizens against any travel to the Queen Elizabeth National Park, which shares a border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. France has also advised its nationals to act prudently. Kulai just sought to assure tourists that the attack was an isolated incident and Uganda remains secure and safe. The National Park is one of Uganda's most popular and is rich in wildlife across its 700 square miles. The area is also home to the unusual three climbing lion, one of the only two places where the cats can be found. October 10 presidential elections saw no significant change from Tuesday. President George Weah maintains a very slim lead with 43.48% of total vote and former Vice President Joseph Boakai with 43.44%. This makes it more likely that the country will go to a runoff presidential election in November. However, Perhaps the biggest surprise came from the legislative results where the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Bo Fall Timbers, was defeated by Anthony Williams. Williams tells me that he changed his strategy and moved closer to the people of his district in Maryland County and began educating them about the government and how the government works. When I lost my job through the intervention of Speaker Buffer Simmons from the National Fishery and Aquaculture Authority, I thought that it was important that I come back to my people back in the district to be able to familiarize myself with them and be part of the community. And then I started to do my own community engagement, town engagement, all of the work that I was doing, I was investing into community development, rural rehabilitation, community rules, doing some work, some drinking water for our people. So as we go gradually, I will also explain to our people about the workings of the government and their rights and when the vote was supposed to come out of their voting. But all of those things that were happening in the national legislature, I was informing them on a daily basis that we have a speaker in the house who is making almost two million ninety four thousand seven hundred and two dollars US every month in the national budget. If you check on page seven, you will see the money there. And he doesn't come back. People are still using hammer in the district to told people me and hammer they can put you in the bed sheet and they tie a rope to the other edge and they'll put you inside. They take you from the from some of the town just to pay for medical treatment. No ambulance in the district. Anthony, let me ask you, you are a very young man and you have just defeated the Speaker of the House of Representatives. What are you going to do now as a member of the House of Representatives? What are your plans? The first thing I want to put in here is to be able to have some reconciliation with our people, bring them back together, because you know there were too many conflicts in this election. The first thing to do before you can be successful as a lawmaker or as a leader, you need to bring the people together to have a reconciliation, wherein those who went against you, you, you know, you forgave them. And so we need to have the reconciliation first so that we can have the kind of a homogeneous development. So the second thing that we tend to do for our people is help. The healthcare situation in Plibo is very, very much you know, embarrassing. If you look at the Plibo Health Center, there is no ambulance in the district. People are used on the motorbike to take patients from one place to another. Pregnant women are delivering in the street. So we also look forward to making sure that we address the healthcare condition of the district. From there, then we move on to water and sanitation, and then we start to do a few of rules into the community so that ambulance can be able to go into the various places in the community. Did the former speaker call to congratulate you? 
No, 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 no. He does not call me to congratulate me. As a matter of fact, today he left the district. He, he flew to Montserrat County with another complaint because the magistrate here in, in Maryland County threw the case over that he raised against the National Election Commission presiding officer in Old Falokan about some other activities that went on there. But the magistrate and the hearing officer in Hartford said the information he raised, it was not substantial. There was no evidence on the basis of that. They threw the case outside and he got irritated and he got on the flight today. He went to Montevallo County to go and, and raise another issue with the National Election Commission Ministry or the people. So as we speak, he has not called me, but I've received tons of calls from government officials, tons of calls from elected officials. They have congratulated me for him. He has not congratulated me. But I am not surprised because this is a behavior. He doesn't congratulate people. Anthony, congratulations for your election. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you, James. Thank you, and I look forward to speaking with you anytime as I move to Morovia by next week. Anthony Williams is a Liberia's newly elected member of the Liberia House of Representatives. He was speaking with us from Plebo, Maryland County. Sierra Leone's main opposition, All People's Congress, the APC Party, has agreed to end its boycott of participation in government functions since the June 24 election. The APC had rejected the results and refused to participate in any level of governance because it says the government tampered with the results to hand itself the majority. Joining us with uh, the details from Freetown is reporter Calvin Lewis. It is uh, an agreement with uh, eight articles, and um, in these eight articles, the resolutions there was that, um, firstly, that the president would make a national address on dialogue, unity, good vision, and peace, and secondly, that the APC will end their non-participation in governance. They also agreed that they would set up a committee on electoral systems and management bodies which would review the electoral system structures and processes. And uh, they also agreed that um, this committee would develop its terms of reference and it would be effective for a period of six months. Importantly, they said um, the parties have agreed that they would release any persons arrested, detained, and or imprisoned for alleged elections and civil protest. This was a sticking point. And uh, secondly, the discontinuation of any politically motivated court cases against the APC and other parties. Also, something which I understand was a sticking point was uh, um, that on the assumption of their elective governance positions, all elected APC officials, members of parliament, mayors, chairpersons, and councillors will have the issue regarding their entitlements, which is their backlog pay, addressed accordingly by the appropriate institutions. Calvin, uh, the APC had stayed out of uh, government functions because of disagreement with the results of the election, saying that the government uh, cheated in the counting of the ballot. So um, how was that resolved? Well, when we listened to uh, Dr. Samuel Kamar, the APC leader, in his uh, uh, speech after the signing, he actually said that they may have not achieved all what the APC had been fighting for. But he says what we have achieved is a very good step to move forward. He says Rome was not built in a day, but we should not give up because they are friends, they are brothers, and uh, they would have differences. But whether we live or die, Sierra Leone will continue. Kelvin, thank you so much again for this very important update. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, 